so we're going to take a look at something very different on this channel today and it's going to be a piece of hardware if you can kind of call it that it's it's quite a strange thing to look at and um, it's kind of intentional because it's all part of the era where these machines and these 8-bit micros and even the 16-bit micros kind of spawn from in a lot of it spawned from people's imagination as in to what the future might hold what we will be doing in a few years time and how we will be doing it so it'd be nice to take a look at this very old ball piece of kit and it's all part of the computer history so let's take a look okay so we have this unit it's a, a data 5000 and it's um quite a bizarre relic from really from the 1980s and we're going to take a quick look at this but first we've got to kind of admire its aesthetics and then wonder what it was all about it was kind of a big briefcase looking thing it's got a nice polished kind of aluminium sort of brushed finish to this strip here and it's got very soft touch case about it it's it's almost like a modern card dashboard with that very soft touch plastics that you find in most sort of european cars and um it's kind of remi reminiscent of that really and it's quite a hefty old thing it's it weighs more than a monitor and um or more than a crt monitor and it's not something i would really want to kind of lug about every day but this is really what this was all about as we can see it's quite a nicely made thing but it's quite bizarre really when you think about it so we're going to take a look inside the case we're going to spin it around and on the back you can see it's got a nice catch on here a very nice hasp catch which press a little button and it releases there's also a set of keys so we're going to slide it down and have a good look at it so as you can see it's quite a big item um, it's nicely finished though so if i lift it up squeeze the catch and we'll see what it's all about okay so as we open it we'll find we've got a few manuals and it's probably a bit of a giveaway so let's have a bit of a look at it okay so that's with the case now open we've got a couple of manuals here we have a ZX Spectrum manual and then another ZX Spectrum manual as well which is all part of the original kit the nice thing about this is it's actually got a few bits and pieces from the original owner of this and he's kept all of the advertising from Sinclair and again software and peripheral catalogue it's quite a funky little thing to look through because it's covering all of the kind of peripherals and bits of software that Sinclair were promoting with these machines and it's still got the interface to <laughs> how to buy your ZX interface too and do you want to order it and it was wasn't that bad priced really it was 1995 but it allowed 28 days for delivery so again you know Sinclair's usual marketing that you get with everything that he produced which was actually quite slick I mean the printers down the bottom what we need you know all that kind of thing so it's all there if you really wanted to go down that route um, we've also got a, a warranty warranty registration card Sanyo is a bit of an odd thing to find in this case and then again this is the tag that you actually got with it this case has been specially designed for your ZX Spectrum provides a workstation for your computer power slide printer unit cassettes and connecting leads it's covered in a high quality 
vinyl which is white clean and the trim panels are actually stainless steel um, basically clean it with a dry cloth so yeah it's um, not a bad little thing it's very well done it's nice it's got all the bits and pieces in and I kind of bought this not so much for this because I've already got a few of these just for the really the the entire kind of history piece of this case see it's it's all right it's um very well built but there's some really sort of odd features inside which make it not so well built such as these kind of covers that go on the leads they're a little bit kind of what you used to get your mcdonald's delivered in in kind of the late 90s early 2000s like that that plasticky kind of finish it's not brilliant um, and again same for the little insert panels on here these are very easily damaged um, but this one's intact and it's in survived pretty pretty much okay really the spectrum sits here and you've got your workstation once you fold this lid but i'm not so sure where you're supposed to put the monitor because if you leave the lid up like this it's basically a big barrier to whatever's inside or behind it um, if you lay it down flat you've got something that's twice the size of an average desk so I'm not sure where they were actually coming from is using this as a, a workstation but you know it's a nice little item uh, it's got space for your power supply all of your connecting leads um, they've even put whoever's owned this machine last um, has looked after it with silica gel packets in there to get rid of any moisture um, don't know how long they've been in there they're probably going to need to be replaced now um, and then you've got space for your software which is all kind of neatly packaged away and this is all the original software that this actually kit came with and i intend keeping it like this because obviously it shows what people were really all about back in the early days of the micros i mean mainly it's games you got full throttle ghostbusters quite pricey when you think about it 9.99 back in the early 80s um, which means probably about 40 pounds today um, so it's you know they weren't massively cheap even though they're on sort of relatively cheap cassette tape sinclair spectrum title by sinclair themselves 7.99 reversi and it gives you an insight to what people actually use these machines for you know, river rescue and what else have we got we got yep usual 199 range these were very popular at the time um mastertronic um all of these kind of what they called kind of budget games some of them were good some of them were terrible you just took your chance and then the original zx spectrum horizons and introduction cassette so yeah they did very very well it's a keyboard trainer entertainment and basically a range of simple programs to get you started so this is really what people kind of expected you to carry around um all dressed up in your 1980s suit with your XR3i or your BMW 3 Series, your 320, 318i. The new Ford Sierra Cosworth. Um, and then basically carry this around take it out of the boot of your car and then drag it to your office um, but then trying to ma manhandle one of these on the tube might, must have been an absolute nightmare 
Please be brought down inside, train on the platform, running to the park, mind the closing doors, please. Be brought down inside and mind the closing doors, please. Mind the doors, mind the doors. But, you know, not quite sure what you would actually do with it once you got to where you were going, unless you were just going to sort of sit there and play these games in your office. Um, but, you know, it makes a nice little tidy away system more than anything. And if you've got kind of limited space in your bedroom or wherever you're going to be using this, well, this is quite a neat system just to shove under your TV, um, put it next to your video collection. Remember, it was the late 80s and so middle to late 80s and into the 1990s that these kind of 8-bit machines were really around. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's a nice piece of history and I quite like it. Um, haven't really tested this machine. It's something I'm going to have a look at next. I don't even know if it works, to be honest. It's one of those buys where I thought, you know, I like the entire combination because it does show quite a bit of the history of these machines and also the history of some of the thinking behind them because it was quite nice that these people were actually thinking about what they could do with these machines, what they could use them for, what they could improve, you know, the way they're packaged up, carried about and used. Because I'm guessing really this is kind of really what the forerunner to a modern laptop would be once you start to get into the NC100s from Amstrad and the Z88. Well, this kind of made a lot more sense because Z88 or the NC was sitting there with maybe a little printer and power supply if you needed one for it, if you weren't running off of batteries, and you can just carry it around in a kind of lightweight fashion. And you could also put your papers in as well, so you didn't have to carry two cases if you were going backwards and forwards to the office. But it's kind of ahead of its time because um, really I don't, really know what you would have done once you got to the office with this. Um, but the thinking and the kind of sentiment was there to make these machines more usable as time went on. Um, so yeah, this it's not a bad system and this is, just noticed, this is actually a Portugal built ZX Spectrum. So it'll be interesting later on to see if this actually works. If not, it's another one that might need refurbishing and repairing. So this is a classic take on your portable computer of 1984. Um, this is when this case was purchased and bought, but they were out almost as soon as the original ZX Spectrum was launched, because you could actually get versions of these for the ZX81 back in 1981. Um, you could also get them for Commodore 64s, which would make it a massive case, because the Spectrum's quite a small machine. Uh, you could get them for a lot of other micros, and I know there was um, similar systems out like this for the New Brain, Newbury New Brain, uh, which was a much smaller footprint machine than the Commodore 64s and even the Amstrads. But to be honest, this, the Husky, the Husky or the Sightplot 400, which is um, what this was actually used for. Um, it's a, originally a Schlumberger machine, so it was used for basically site work, etc. This would have made massive more sense than actually having a Spectrum in there because it's got its own built-in screen. It's one of the really early, proper, hard-wearing, almost indestructible portable computers. But this is what people thought at the time that would be a good thing to have. And it's nice to have now as a, a piece of classic history. So thanks for watching. Thanks for having a look at this very strange idea of what the future held for us. Hello, future. Um, and I hope you enjoyed looking at this. It's just a little snippet in time. 
Um, and it's kind of all about where we came from, why we've got our modern day laptops that we don't have to carry a massive great briefcase around and a full size computer around with us. And um, it's kind of stepping stones really everything we do on this channel is stepping stones to where we are so i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you'll subscribe and i'll see you very soon so thank you for watching see you soon